Welcome back to New Rockstars. It's the big question. This is the show that gives you too much information, too much information. about all those nerdy mysteries like the MCU multiverse and how, thanks to WandaVision, now it might not actually look like Doctor Strange's acid trips. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. We're moving forward. Also, welcome back to both of us being in the same room. It's you, been too long. You guys, this is pretty serious, but we were testing our uh, monogamous relationship mm. and we said each of us gets a hall pass, you get to pick one person. Uh, we tried it out. I pick Marina, you pick Tommy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, while fun, it made me more appreciate what I was missing uh, from my other tender teddy. Tender teddy. And you know what? That's what hall passes are designed for. It's like the pina colada song. It's not what you're missing, it's what you already have. If you like pina colada. Why do people think we're gay for each other? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Well, uh, let's... Uh... This week's big question. Move <laughs> yes, on, quickly, on. quickly. Ooh, ooh yep. Uh, okay, so this one I've assigned you this week is uh, a big question, appropriately, uh, for the show. Yeah, We covered in Rogue Theory last week uh, uh, what we thought the WandaVision impact might be on the MCU, but I actually want to know what actually is the Marvel multiverse like? It's a very good question because multiverse has come up a lot before, a lot. Um, and people keep saying, they, they just say, oh, multiverse is coming. Uh, we got an MCU Phase 4 movie called Multiverse of Madness, but no one really quite knows exactly what the multiverse will look like. WandaVision has given us some more information. So let's just explain everything we know about the multiverse as it's been established in canon comics and movies so far. So uh, the first time we heard the word multiverse in the movies, as you remember, it was in Doctor Strange. I remember. The first Doctor Strange, the ancient one says a vast multiverse. And then the context for that was Strange was just kind of floating through different watercolor paintings. Right. And so it's just a multiverse, just a bunch of abstract uh, collection of paintings that we can fly through, like the quantum realm. Yes. Yes. Uh, the dark dimension and hands. It's the multiverse just hands that yes. grow up us. That's all. This is a great answer. Work. We love each other. Well, um, the thing is, is the multiverse in the comics. Uh, when it was introduced, it's far more elaborate, more complex, more intricate, mm -hmm. and also in a way more grounded because it's an it's a spectrum of infinite parallel realities with just slight alterations, different heroes, uh, just different contexts, different genres. So we saw this in the Sony Spider-Verse into the Spider-Verse, right. where there was like uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, who came from Earth 1610, uh, Peter Parker, the Prime, Earth 616, uh, Spider-Gwen Stacy, Earth 65. But where do they get these numbers, right? Or these numbers, does that mean there's like thousands and thousands of these Marvel universes? Peter Porker is from Earth 8311. Um, Penny Parker is from Earth 14512. That doesn't mean there are over 14,000 established different universes canonically. It just means like there are infinite numbers and right. a lot of those pages have not been filled in yet. And that they specifically are only getting from the first 15,000 and not Earth, one trillion, six hundred, you know, whatever. Well, big numbers like that are actually pretty interesting because the MCU, the cinematic universe, has been established as one of those universes. Its numerical designation is Earth 1999999, five nines. So, like, potentially 200,000 right. realities. Um, so, if you think about it, that means the whole history of uh, Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, and Tom Holland, Peter Parker, and, and the Asgardians, and the singularity that created the Infinity Stones. That's it's all, all real. It's all real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> We're another one. Yeah. Uh, and it's all connected to everything we've seen in the comics. It's all connected to everything in into the Spider-Verse, even, because those right. have the same kind of numerical designations. Getting back to how this is going to look in Phase 4 with WandaVision and Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness being a Doctor Strange sequel kind of seems like that's the direction they're gonna go. They're gonna have more abstract, trippy, surreal dimensions. Did you just lose some booze? Don't lose the booze. You gotta finish that now. I'll absorb it through my skin. Party foul. Mm. Um, so we don't, uh, are we just looking at more like dream dimension stuff, more like Doctor Strange hell? Well, yeah, but if Kevin Feige wanted to be true to the multiverse as we know it in the comics, and as it has been established in minor clues throughout the series so far, the real Marvel multiverse in Phase 4 should be more grounded. It should be like Elseworlds, where it's just like different power dynamics, different mm -hmm. heroes, different villains. Um, so just to kind of run down the, the subtle, subtle clues we've gotten of the multiverse so far, Ant-Man and the Wasp, of all films, actually gave us probably a pretty big hint of the physical possibility of the multiverse. Remember, there was that lecture by Bill Foster where he discussed subatomic particles existing simultaneously in multiple parallel realities. He used that phrase. And there was also, in Thor The Dark World, that moment where D Dr. Eric Selvig was ranting to the other people in the retirement home, including Stan Lee, and on the board behind him was Schrodinger's cat. 
uh, yeah. and all these other theoretical physics terms about the, this very idea of multiple planes of existence. Right. Real quick, it's obvious that you are the Dr. Eric Selvig of New Rockstar. If I had to have an analog in the MCU, That's definitely who Selvig would be my guy. So if you remember, Avengers Endgame tried to apply some of these concepts to how they did time travel. I would say it wasn't very clear. They just kind of threw out some, some Planck's mm -hmm. constant and whatnot. Um, but they talked about how major alterations to the past would create new parallel timelines. Um, but And it would leave the original timeline unaffected, but we never really saw what those hypothetical timelines would look like. We always stayed in the perspective of our original timeline. I felt like when I was watching Endgame that there was this other like kind of obvious setup because of these time travel elements. I remember reading a comic once that had uh, Mr. Fantastic saying that that there's no such thing as time travel. That's right. It's like you're just traveling to another dimension and then you literally do anything, and now you think, you're like, I saved the world! And it's like, no, there's another dimension where the world did not get saved now. You thought you traveled through time, you're just dimension hopping. Yeah. And so anytime you've ever seen time travel, you actually saw a multiverse. But we know that Loki, when he escaped with the Tesseract, he created a new branch right. timeline. He's alive now. In the other MCU universe, he's dead. So we have two universes where Loki, the cat, is alive or dead. Schrodinger's Loki. But um, we also know that uh, old Cap might have lived in a new branch reality right. as well. Well, it, he, it has to be different, right? Just by taking up space that wasn't taken up right. before, right? Uh, you know, the guys that Peggy Carter was, you know, entertaining in the evenings. Was, must not have been Cap. So uh, we also know with Loki that it's going to bring in this agency called the Time Variance Authority, uh, which they kind of keep track of like people who disrupt the timelines, mm -hmm. and they, they're like the policing agency for that. So maybe with this show, they'll start giving us a very clear layout of all the different mm -hmm. timelines in the multiverse. It's like Rick and Morty. Yes, yeah. and then the showrunner of Loki is a Rick and Morty writer, so right. clearly they're trying to bring in this idea of a multiverse. Oh, also, there was a real subtle throwaway detail in Avengers Endgame that you only really notice by like listening to it very carefully. Peggy Carter mentions a guy named Braddock in the 1970s. The name Brian Braddock is Captain Britain. So Captain Britain was an alternate UK version of Captain America. Um, and later on, the Captain Britain would actually oversee the Captain Britain Corps, which is kind of like a league of alternate Avengers who uh, for, are all from different dimensions and they all kind of work together to solve uh, multi-dimensional problems. So already we're starting to get a sense that there might be a Captain mm -hmm. Britain Corps that is overseeing this multiverse mm -hmm. that currently already exists. And that was setting up this idea of a multiverse. So. WandaVision. WandaVision is taking what seems to be the biggest step forward in its display of the multiverse as it's going to be in the MCU. Like the brief trailer footage shows Wanda Maximoff, um, you know, jumping in and out of these different sitcom realities, but Vision is still alive. We don't know what is causing this. Maybe she's trapped in like a spell or she's being cursed, or maybe she's like transported her mind inside Vision's mind and that's what we're getting there. But like clearly this idea of Vision being alive again like that is Marvel saying this is the idea of the multiverse. Characters who have died, mm -hmm. they Might can come, right. they can be alive again in different Elseworld stories and in different forms. And RDJ said, "Hey, it's theoretical. I could show up like once or twice." Exactly, again. Yeah. Um, and uh, along with Loki as well. Right. And the reason why I want to say this could be alternate realities is because obviously the reference point for the WandaVision series is going to be House of M in some form, mm -hmm. and in House of M, Scarlet Witch is going through this kind of uh, psionic break where she's chaotically resetting realities. One reality where mutants are in charge, they're mm -hmm. like the dominant group in society, a reality where she has two mutant kids, and then at the end of it, a reality where mutants are mostly wiped out. So that seems to be what they're kind of doing with WandaVision. So this idea of reality flipping and reality resetting, the MCU is saying expect to see different genres, different kinds of pop culture -y things where characters don't realize they're in different realities, but they've just always lived in this history where the rules have always worked this way. Uh, a reality where things are horrorier. Yes. Yeah. Horrors. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to yeah. the oldest profession. And I think the big thing with WandaVision, it's establishing Wanda Maximoff as the conduit for this multiverse switching. Like, the idea of WandaVision, it's on a TV set, like it's her vision, she can kind of change the channel mm -hmm. of the multiverse. So however exactly the multiverse plays out, she's gonna be the key to it. Characters are gonna have to check in with her to move from reality to reality. 
maybe it's just a matter of her astrally projection, projecting her consciousness and wh whomever she's with mm -hmm. to this next reality and they're just kind of visiting it. Or maybe she can kind of like basically change the set of everything mm -hmm. around her so that everyone is now waking up in a new reality and they don't realize they're in a new reality. But either way, WandaVision's gonna be the key to it and the character of Scarlet Witch is going to be kind of the shepherd to the new places in the multiverse. Interesting. And using a TV is a is a good idea as well because those other TV channels, even though right. you aren't tuned into them, are right. happening. Like right. you, when you switch over to a new show, you're jumping into it as it's in progress, as the right. episode is like halfway through. As opposed to like when you start a new YouTube video or you start it from the beginning or when you go to a new website, that website loads up for right. you. So the TV as kind of an analog example of this might help people understand this idea of concurrent realities that are already in progress. Right. Basically it's saying anything is possible right. now, including new versions of things we've already seen and basically our dream scenario versions have already seen. And the fact that it's Disney behind this, Disney's just getting more and more money. And if it's just a matter of like throwing money at Sony to buy all the Spider-Man universes, we could see a story where it really is Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, and a new actor playing Miles Morales, maybe Donald Glover, all in a movie together. Get out of my brain. It's possible now. I like the idea that there's an alternate version. So all those alternate movies have happened and there's an alternate new rock stars. Are we swapped? Like, is it like Philip just looks like this and Eric looks like that? No way. Do you feel like you have a better understanding of how the multiverse at least has been set up so far? Yes. Yes. What would be interesting to see is if in Marvel Phase 4, the characters who explain the rules of the multiverse are Reed Richards. Like the yeah. Fantastic Four, they're the smart, you know, the smartest guy. Uh, maybe he's from an alternate reality, and he's like okay. the pig reality. <laughs> the end of the pig Reed Richards. Pig Reed Richards. Yeah, he's so stretchy. He's so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, before we continue uh, with some bite-sized questions, we want to take a quick moment just to talk about something that's important to us, folks. Are you tired of big wireless taking advantage of you? You know those companies, game, they can be like Sith lords, just running Hydra from. Inside LexCorp or something. Wow, I feel like that's I like a, the most evil combination ever. I hate fees and bills that are high for no reason, like uh, Indiana Jones with snake level hate. Why did it have to be snakes? So you hate them. I hate, <laughs> yeah. I hate them. Well, Mint Mobile is a great solution, and thanks to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. Mint Mobile can help you save more than $1,000 a year on your wireless bill. There's a better way to get wireless, and it's Mint Mobile. It's 10 times cheaper than your, like, normal big wireless bill yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but uh, don't worry, for that cheaper price, you don't have to sacrifice performance, whether you're making calls or surfing the internet or checking social media to see how many likes your Aquaman fan art is how, getting. How many is it at right now? Uh, not enough. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month <gasps> and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash big Q. Again, that's mintmobile.com slash big Q for a new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month. $15 a month. That's a great deal. Okay, on to some uh, bite-sized questions that Philip is gonna answer for us. Uh, we actually got some real mail this time. Um, okay, so our first one comes from at Solid Bold, uh, who asks, which metal is stronger, adamantium or vibranium, and why? If they both exist in Marvel, why isn't Wolverine, why wasn't Wolverine made using vibranium? And you have one minute to answer it. Okay, and they're, they're like, we should have made it out of vibranium. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, it's a it's an interesting question. So adamantium and vibranium are both considered to be crazy strong, right? Uh, but if I can simplify it as much as I can, adamantium is a metal that its special property is that it is so incredibly hard, right? Mm -hmm. it, it does not bend, and that's the unique feature about that's it. Right. Vibranium is actually, shouldn't be compared in terms of strength. It does a different thing entirely. Vibranium is almost more similar to rubber. Yeah, right. it's super, you can make weaves out of it. I only have a make, minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so the fact that it vibrates, what it does is it's actually incredibly able to bend and quickly retake its own form. Mm. So in the comics, adamantium can actually pierce vibranium. Mm. Uh, Wolverine has been able to stab through Black Panther's costume, but vibranium is actually able to take more of a hit uh, and kind of keep on ticking, like the Energizer Brother Bunny, right? You have to uh -huh. beat him up and then he, yeah, he, he keeps going. He, he just said, <laughs> give me another move. Killed a lot of gangs. <laughs> yeah. uh, he always gets back up. Um, but the the one thing that uh, people have, might have seen in the MCU is it's possible that Thanos' sword maybe was made from adamantium mm. because it's able to destroy Cap's shield, right. which is made from vibranium. 
but it's hard to, I would say technically if you mean which one's harder, it's adamantium, but which one is like a better suit to make out of? Adamantium suit kind of sucks actually. Yeah, it's, it's like a clunky, yeah, exactly. Medieval so armor. they're not the same kind of thing, but adamantium can pierce vibranium. Interesting choice. It's like uh, your adamantium claws pierced this vibranium shirt that one episode. Uh. Oh yeah, there were pencils, but yeah. All right, this one was mailed into us from uh, Jackson Stewart. Uh, and it was awesome. He's a uh, he's a Marine at Camp Pendleton, and he watches with oh, his cool. uh, one and a half year old son Jackson. And he sent us this awesome handwritten oh, letter, sweet. the picture of his son. They watch their videos together. They're uh, so nice to send us uh, his question. At I hope the they end. didn't watch that one episode or a couple of these episodes recently. <laughs> well, one and a half. I don't know if he's learning <laughs> yeah. everything about Palpatine's sexual history. Ah. Anyway, he asks, what do you guys think became of Cap's broken shield, which you just brought up? You think he kept it? Maybe he gave it to Morgan after all so that she could sled. Yeah, so the actress, I think, did use it yeah, for sledding, yeah. actually. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we have that. But uh, so I, I went painstakingly frame by frame and rewatched Endgame. Oh, no, how sad my job is. Uh, no, it's fun. I got to uh, watch again, and I tracked it the whole way. I really tried to keep track of it the best I could. Uh, and it absolutely disappears at a certain point. Uh, there's a moment, Cap has that shield all the way very close to the near yeah. end of the movie, but there's specifically a moment where Thanos is trying to beat Captain Marvel to the uh, quantum uh, like device that's in the back of Scott Lang's van, uh -huh. and Thanos throws his maybe adamantium sword into the van and there's this huge shockwave that goes off and we see a bunch of characters just get blown away. Mm -hmm. We don't clearly see who gets blown away in that moment, but ever since that happened, after that we never see Cap with the shield again. So likely mm -hmm. that he just gets separated from his shield at yeah. that moment. Uh, and then, I, I, I feel like I might be stretching a little bit, but then you see Captain Marvel and Thanos fight and there's, a, well it was highlighted in a frame here, I think it could be part of the debris that you see back there. You kind of see a little bit of a star, maybe some circles around it. Uh -huh. So it's probably in that debris field somewhere. Um, Interesting. But do I think somebody salvaged it and sold it on Marvel eBay? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Is it possible that when that quantum tunnel exploded, the shield fragment got sucked back in time? Yes, into that's what happened. Realm? And it immediately decapitated <laughs> Tony Stark's parents and they died a whole different way. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, and thank you, Jackson and Nathan Stewart, for watching our videos. You guys are very nice to mail us in. Another piece of mail we got was from the Brito family. Uh, we have a big question. Who lost their arm in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker? So this question is about this theory of, in every movie, somebody loses an arm. <laughs> no matter what movie it is. Yeah. A Bug's Life. Some, they've some ripped poor guy. Arthur yeah. Pod, yeah. <laughs> it's gone. Uh, no, in Star Wars movies, people are known for losing limbs, right? Uh -huh. I do have a list of, it, it's extremely common to lose more than just an arm. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to episode one, Darth Maul loses both legs. That's right. Episode two, Zam Wessel loses oh, that was the assassin uh, yeah, gets... her right arm. Uh, the Ackley loses its legs. Uh -huh. And Anakin actually in that one, it loses That's his right, right arm. That's right, yeah, Count Dooku. Episode three, uh, Count Dooku loses both hands. Both hands. Uh, General Grievous loses two hands, but he's still fine. Uh -huh. Mace Windu loses his right hand. Poor Anakin loses his left arm and both his legs. Uh -huh. uh, and then in New Hope, that's a famous one where Ponda Baba uh, loses his right arm. That's right. Empire Strikes Back, a, a Wampa loses its right arm. C-3PO loses all of his limbs, you just can't uh -huh. find them. Uh -huh. uh, and then that's one where famously Luke loses his right hand. Ah! And then in Return of the Jedi, Vader loses his uh, right hand. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, but that's actually like the only ones that are established as definite arm losses. That's if right. you go to the new trilogy, they actually haven't shown limbs uh, being cut off. They show, for instance, there's things like uh, in deleted scenes, maybe oh, someone lost right. one, yeah. or something we didn't see, like uh, C-3PO again. Clearly, there's been an arm replacement because he yeah, has the right a red arm, arm yeah. right? So it wasn't a requirement of the new trilogy that they lose limbs. But the one thing I'll point out, this is my favorite thing to acknowledge, actually, about some of the cool stuff that uh, that happens in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, if Nobody lost their arm, as far as we can tell. They are on Mustafar, which is where Anakin lost a lot of limbs. So mm -hmm. there's limbs floating around, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, while no one loses one, it is the only moment where someone gains one. Because Palpatine, uh, right. when he finally is taken from the Jedi, 
gains an arm and starts yeah. to regrow one. He, he sucks energy out of the dyad and the force. It wasn't totally clear exactly, but it does feel it does feel very purposeful that yeah. it, they were trying to say like he's doing a reverse Jedi move. Yeah, almost. he's swinging the pendulum, whatever. Right, you know, yeah, and closing that book again. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Okay, well, great answer there. Thank you for all that research and thank you for these questions. We have time for one more question of the personal variety. Uh, and this was sent in to us. How can you tell it's a person? Ooh, it's wet. Uh, ooh, it's dripping <laughs> yeah. and sticky. Get this thing off me. Um, this was sent to us by our buddy Under Siege on Discord. And a reminder that you can talk to us yeah, on, on Discord, Discord. Uh, where we're getting our real uh, hot takes on these things when they come out by becoming a patron of New Rockstars at patreon.com slash New Rockstars. So one of these guys is Under Siege. Uh, and he asked, I want to hear the story about the lead up of Eric hitting Philip in the face. Punching me in the face. He said hitting, by the way. And this is the Mandela effect thing that I was referencing because you seem to think that maybe this didn't happen or I'm, something. I'm not familiar with, no. I, I remember a version of it, but. A not. version. Uh -huh. So you, though, are known for your your steel trap uh -huh. uh, and your memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Tommy how you got your girlfriend, trap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think happened? I remember we were in college. This is around this is already wrong. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, and we were driving. It was in Gainesville, Florida. We were driving on University Avenue. Avenue. Yeah, I remember it being Boulevard. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Mandela. It was you and someone else was in the back seat. And I remember there was like some kind of plush ball, like a little. I was in the back seat. You were in the passenger, the passenger seat. seat. And you guys were throwing the ball back and forth. And I said, "I'm driving. I'm driving. I can't be bothered right now." And it kept like <laughs> clipping me and hitting me. I'm like, "Guys, I'm getting distracted." And I'm really bad at multitasking. I get really, really flustered. Like if I try to like talk on the phone and someone else is talking to me, I, I start screaming <laughs> and I just start crying. I wet myself and I black out for four years. And uh, and then I get a college it, degree. And, and that's what you did. Yeah, weaken at burning me through college the uh but at some point you intentionally grabbed it and you threw it at my face and i said if you do that again i'm gonna hit you and you threw it harder and i don't remember punching you i kind of blacked out but i, <laughs> you did I just remember throwing my hand back no you did not backhand me and it clipped your your uh chin and you go oh, you hit me <laughs> I, that is that is sixty percent accurate. Okay, I'll that take is, it. First, first of all, there's there was no balls involved at all. All right, you well. just completely added like you you're thinking of like <laughs> hacky stack in college or yeah. something. Yeah, no it's balls. A, I thought there was an inflatable frisbee. No, it's much worse. I think if I remember correctly. As you were driving down the road, I was like trying to get you pulled over or something. <laughs> so I was like yanking the steering wheel <laughs> a lot. We're saving our lives. And, and you can well, and like, because I knew you were so flustered about driving and your car was pretty new at the time. But same car, right? Same car. Uh, and I would yank the steering wheel, but not so bad that we died. We didn't die. And then you were Another like. Another alternate reality. Of yes. Us, so. And then you did say, if you do it again, I'm going to hit you. And then I was like, this little bitch. <laughs> it's like, you've never, especially that version of you, cut to picture, uh, Eric, you, you weighed 68 pounds. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. You I were two very feet tall. huge lumpy out of apple. Now it's buried under mounds of fat. Yeah, no, you were like, so you were this little, like, doe. And then, <laughs> doe boy. Uh, and then I was like, no, he won't. And so I did it one more time, and you did punch me, but you did it like this. I didn't have a fist. I'm gonna, no, you did. You did. Okay, well, and I'm going to show you what you did. Don't. I'm going to do motion. it. No, because I'm also going to do it at the same uh, hardness because okay. this is payback after all this time. Fair enough. Okay, so you look that way, yank my steering wheel. <laughs> That's me. And then I'm you. <sighs> you got this. I did not say you got this. <laughs> you you had to hype yourself up first, and I saw your eyes in the in the rearview mirror, and you were like. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then you did it, and it was about that hard. There was an applause. It was uh, knee jerk. It was instinctive. No, it was no, to protect no, no. the passengers. Your instinct took 30 seconds to like, work up the courage to do. And I thought, I remember your reaction. It, it was more like you slid your knuckles down my cheeks. I do remember this, that that feeling. I was like, my, my, like my head didn't move. But, but I remember thinking it wasn't a real punch, so it wasn't a big deal. But I also, I don't think it was that hard. I, I think it was a <laughs> hit. And, uh, <laughs> you did hit me. And it was more just like a, a stop, but it was like, don't kill us. You know what we need? We need to find the third person in the car. There was at least two other people in the car. Okay, we need to find, who was it? it? We have a buddy named Spencer and his... Uh, squeaky. <laughs> squeaky. <laughs> yeah. PJ, Squeak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, purple stuff. <laughs> Donkey dog, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> These beautiful, creepy cows. <laughs> about lifting weights with PJ and Squee and... 
Donkey Dong Doug. If you want, you can have a free hit. I no, no, I already got my free hit. Man, your mic is like so don't, off. No, don't, don't touch me. Your mic. Don't touch me. I'm driving. I'm, I'm just, just trying to fix your mic. I'm trying to land this I'm bird. Trying to fix your mic. I'm trying to land this bird. I'm trying to land this bird. I don't like this. I'm gonna throw this little bitch. He's not gonna do it. <laughs> the microphone! This, been, uh, this episode of New Rock Stars. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. Jackson's letter! <laughs> No, it's wet Jackson's, and sticky. The other one got drier. That was wet before. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, this has gotten wild. <laughs> oh God. I can't Don't drive, drive like home. this. We'll call Philip an Uber, guys. Uh, remember, you can uh, you can tweet us at New Rockstars with the hashtag Big Question and send uh, mail at our PO box so we can feature your letters and hopefully they'll they'll get out of the splash zone next time. Why is there a hair here? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just uh, real quick remembering that the there was a lot of homoerotic energy to start this episode, and kind of a lot to end it too. It's a real book and a dick. Ended here. it a uh, yeah in yeah. a wet t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> I didn't intend for it to go that crazy. Uh, and uh, subscribe to New Rock Stars um, here on YouTube, and subscribe if you're listening to the podcast version wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, you can follow us at uh, Philip Molina at EA Voss, and we'll see you next week, guys. So long.